printing with two colors and no purge tower and no poop? This is the Cetus 2, and it has two filaments that come all the way to the front, and they come together into a nozzle right to the very tip, and that tip can change filaments every centimeter, and it's really exciting. And I've had an opportunity to work with it for the last two months, so let's see what it can do. Full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Tier Time, the Cetus 2 folks, but they have no editorial control and they're seeing this video at the same time you are. They have entrusted that I'll use the printer and tell you my experiences, both good and bad. And so given the fact that this is a sponsored video, this is not a review. This is just my experience from using it over the last couple months. I've seen a lot of other videos from different content creators on the Cetus 2, and I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to use their UpStudio slicing tool to take these two filaments and print out complex multicolor models. Let's talk about the machine. The install is fairly straightforward and it's quite well documented. It takes 30 to 40 minutes, maybe 20 minutes if you've done a lot of 3D printers before, and it is rock solid. I mean, there's a lot of steel here and it just does not move. It is quite heavy. Now, one of the things though is you don't have auto bed leveling in here, so you do have to go through and go through a repeated process to make sure you get the bed level. However, once it's level, it has really stayed level and that's something that I was concerned about because the entire extruder head here is held on primarily with one big bolt and I was worried about it losing level and wobbling but nope it has been also very solid. All right anytime I have a printer I'm interested to know what the decibel levels are and how loud it is since we are around 3D printers a lot. Now this one has two big fans that are cooling this great big extruder that has two filaments coming out at the same time and so it's got a lot of cooling power. Let's see how loud it is right near the printer. All right, that's over 70, which is considered disrupting. Now let's move it a little further away. And that drops down to around 60, which is laundry level. And then let's go one step further back. And now we're down to 50. And 50 is considered conversational level. I've had this printer for a couple months. It is in the next room, but I can hear it and I prefer to have it off just because of the white noise. The first thing I did was print some of the models on the SD card that came with the printer. Now, if you printed before with white, and these are the two colors they sent with me, you know that it's really hard to get them separated. And you can very clearly see that it's got green eyes and green horns here. And then there are some colors in between. But this one is really amazing. This printed exactly like this. I have done no post-process on it and this rocket is really interesting and so I wanted to know how they did it also I ran out of those filaments I changed over to a red and a green look at this frog again no purge tower no poo printed exactly like this and I wanted to know how it was done so this is a direct drive extruder. However, it's got Bowden tubes that are coming in, reverse Bowden, if you will. But I really like some of the functionality. If you want to load one of the filaments or unload the filaments, it heats up and then goes through the load and the unload process automatically. Now it does something that is both a good and a bad thing. I don't know if you've ever had it load or unload filament and then walked away I've done that. Every time you load or unload, it immediately starts to cool down. So it works very well at doing that. Once the filaments come into the extruder, it comes right to the very tip. And at that point, it determines whether it's going to push out, in this case, the orange or the clear. And it actually does a very a minor amount of retraction to pull them in and out. And you do have some control over that. But how you control that is something I needed to learn by using the Tier Time Up Studio slicer tool. So Up Studio is, if you're familiar with Cura or Prusa Slicer or Bamboo Slicer, this is going to seem familiar and yet it's going to be different. It's got different names for things, a uh, different arrangement of things, and it's got things that I had to spend time figuring out. So I'm going to give you a quick little tour of it and show you what I learned. What I will say is if you're someone like me who really enjoys going in and putting models in, changing settings and slicing, you could have a lot of fun with this because I did. Um, you have to learn a lot. It is is a learning curve to keep that in mind. The first model I worked with was this compliant mechanism clip by Devin Montes of Make Anything and it actually printed fairly well. Let me show you how easy it is to paint it up because that's what I find really conveniently 
easy in this tool and why maybe it printed not as great as it could have. So this is up studio and I have loaded the compliant mechanism chip. So you see over on the right side, it says mini cube up three. You can drop any STL file in and it will create this sort of project list. In order to paint a model, it's I think on par, maybe a little easier in some ways than other painting tools. So I'm gonna go in and right mouse and select the paint option. And then you can pick any surfaces it does a pretty good job of picking things to paint and specifically look at this this side here with all of these little knobs um, bumps it just only paints the actual base so whenever you've selected everything that you want to paint and you're done you can right mouse and then you do an option called separate. Now the reason you do separate, and it's prompting me with the 2.0, I'm gonna use this uh, Q's ginger ale. I love these things, not sponsored. These things are great, non-alcoholic. Uh, so if I had a cylinder, it's prompting me with a number. The 2.0 means millimeters. And what it wants to know is you've got two colors. You've now painted a second color. How much depth am I going to use the second color? So in this case, we've painted in red. How deep do we want the red to go? And I think given how thin this is, I'm gonna change that to 1.0, one millimeter, and then it will show the painted sides. Now I can go in after that. I've made all the choices I need. I'm going to right mouse exit, and then you're ready to slice the model. So use the pancakes, stack of pancakes, it slices it, and there it is. And this is the painted model. Now you'll notice it has some little spots that aren't perfect in here. And if you look at the actual completed one, that's exactly what I got. So it did a really good job of painting. It did a nice job of separating those colors, especially considering that we had no purge tower, but it wasn't perfect. And I'm gonna come back to that and talk to you about how you can fix that. But in the meantime, let's take this and send this to the printer. This is Wand, and this is the Wi-Fi tool that actually you can take and send your models through Wand to the printer, and you can actually see the extruder head moving around, and you can control the printer from here, and I think it's a really nice part of the package that you can do Wi-Fi printing with the Cetus tube. So this printed, it looked good, but I think I could make it better. So I went back over to Up Studio, dive into the slicer settings and see what I could figure out and learn. And uh, that led to this and a whole bunch more prints. So some examples of my experimentation. I uh, painted these little areas red and none of them showed up red. So I painted part of Cali Cat's tail and had some words on the front and that worked out pretty nicely mostly, although I got a lot of stringing. And so then I found out that you definitely can control stringing. It's not an issue so much with the printer. Um, I did another couple of tests with it, and then I printed this kunai, which actually printed really beautifully. It did have some stringing in the middle of the diamonds. And then I moved on to these two, and these two are some of my favorite ones, this soap dish with the bubbles that go all the way through to the back. And then this little dish that also looks really pretty and is extremely clean between the colors. So after a while and a lot of models, I started to get better with the settings. And so I really wanted, I think my goal here was to see if I could in the Up Studio with the Cetus 2 get it to successfully print clean colors. And so I was working with the Articulated Slug, which everyone knows. And this was a great model to test because you could just select a few sections and send it off to the printer after slicing it. But I was not able, if you can tell from this, really to get good, clear separation. And so I went back and I worked with the settings more. And in the end, I was able to get a better separation of colors. But I think you absolutely can get a good, clear separation if you want. But there's one thing that I was not doing, and that was key. And I'm gonna go back and show it to you on the very first model I had, which was this compliant clip. And that was actually using a purge tower. The thing I've said we haven't needed to use from the start. We're back to the compliant chip. And this time you'll notice there's a little hexagonal tower beside it. This is called a purge tower. And you'll see I have enabled that there is a purge tower as a component to this model. Now, I wasn't a fan of this because we were going with no waste, but when I slice it, you can look all around and this model is now very clean and the separation of colors is very crisp. Now the 
perch tower I think is more like a prime tower it's really very small and it's sewing it only once every layer it's going over and since it's very quickly changing between colors it's actually priming from one color to the other and given the fact that it is waste however having a model that is very clean I think is well worth the price and I think it's certainly a lot smaller than your typical purge tower I'm just scratching the surface and I keep learning more every time I use the product so here was an example that they had on the SD card and it had this really interesting checkered pattern here it turns out that that's something that you can do fairly easily you can go in and you can apply a PNG pattern to your model and so I took over here a diagonal pattern and I applied it to the model and then you can slice it and it will actually print that way now one of the things i didn't actually talk about is i've got this image this sub image one of type surface and if you click on that it brings up this sub models types and this is where the, we need to go into a lot more than just my experiences with the cetus 2 but look at all these different objects so far really the only thing we were working with was separate which is saying the extruder one filament is separate from extruder two we've got extruder three all these different infills i talked about support I talked about purge tower a little bit but in this case we're doing surface and surface is what you're doing you're applying a pattern to the surface and I printed this multiple times the first time I printed it where is it I got this which doesn't look like a diagonal pattern at all you can see it a little bit in there and that's when I realized I needed to go back and test around with the settings and that's one of the things that's really interesting if you like messing around with slicer settings you might really enjoy this if you want a plug in push the button and play this is not necessarily going to be the best option for you but here we go the second time I printed it I got this and I stopped it midway so that I could show you what it looks like so we've got the diagonal pattern on there right and then this is what it looks like on the inside and this is just really neat I was able to in this one apply uh, PNG in this case I put text and you can just type in text I put filament couldn't fit stories on there something exciting you can do if you have a printer that can print two filaments is you can print a model with one filament and then you can print soluble supports with the other so you can take a much more complex geometry or something that has for instance the need for supports on the inside and you can print it with soluble supports. If you don't know what soluble supports are, it supports that dissolve in some medium. In this case, I'm using PVA, and so it will dissolve in water. Up Studio does something to handle this I've never seen before, so let's go over here and let me show you. So I have this truncated Tetrachus hexahedron, and I'm going to right mouse and say enable or disable supports. And then I'm going to slice, and you'll see a whole bunch of supports show up. So what supports are auto generated you can control this and this is a really cool thing if you look here I am going to hover over let me move this over here I'm going to hover over each of these sections and you can turn on any of the sections you want you can change the angle and there are a whole bunch of other things that you can do but I really like this it gives you a lot of fine control while letting up studio pick all the settings for you for supports now I printed this darn thing and it delaminated from the bill plate close to the end but I reprinted it and it's finished so let's get it off the bill plate and get it in some water so we can see the supports dissolve it is stuck I had a heck of a time getting it off because the PVA was not sticking to the bill plate so I used a lot of glue all right ready to see it dissolve All right, the PVA dissolved into a cloud of goo, but it came out really neat. Now, why is this exciting? This is exciting because if you need to have supports inside a model in an area that you can't easily remove afterwards, this is a really great option. And this is so cool. So final thoughts. And first, if you've been enjoying this video or you're interested in other 3D printing filament in particular videos, a subscribe to the channel would be colorful. All right, first on the positive side, I love the fact that it has Wi-Fi support. You can send prints from your computer and then you have an interface that you can see what's going on and control the printer from your computer. Secondly, I have had issues where it's had filament run out or it's had crashing and it will not terminate the print. It will stop and wait for you as opposed to just keep plowing forward. So that's nice. I do think that the painting is actually 
well implemented in Up Studio because you can not only one of the models that I printed, I did three mouse clicks and it completely selected everything I wanted. There's some slider bars and things we didn't have a chance to go into here, but I like the painting. I have really enjoyed the fact that I can slice the file once and then make changes and slice the file again and compare the two all within up Studio. We did a little bit with the auto-generated supports. I've never seen auto-generated supports implemented in quite the same way and I think it's really powerful. I usually turn off auto-generated supports because it always gives me way more or not enough or not where I'm looking for it. So I like that functionality. Another positive is this thing is built like a tank and it's not going to move while you're printing. On the negative side, the fans are always on. I'd love to see a firmware update where those would only be on when you're printing or the extruder's cooling down. Secondly, something that's a big one for me is I like to see a flexible build plate. Some people love glass and this carborundum is great, but a lot of printers are having an option for a flexible build plate. In addition, automatic build plate leveling. I had to go through the whole thing. It did hold the build plate level the whole time, but I love to see an ABL on any printer that I'm working with. The software that is available on the touchscreen on the CDIS2 is extremely limited. I think it could um, use some additional functionality there. Hardware. It is a custom nozzle and the extruder itself, as you can well understand, is custom and that's something to consider. I don't know that it's a negative so much, but it is a consideration that you don't have standard parts when ordering. For Up Studio, some of the things are not as polished as like you would see in Cura or Prusa Slicer, but there is good documentation there where it's there. Documentation is lacking in some places or is back level to the prior version of the product. Mouse controls, mouse controls. I kept getting, I don't know, the world kept going upside down and I hear I'm not the only one with that. So the, the, I think the final thing is with Tier Time's product of Studio, you can have Extruder 1, Filament 1, Extruder 2, Filament 2, Extruder 3, 50-50, but you don't have an opportunity to do any more gradations. And the message I always heard was, if you want to do more than that, go to Cura. So that's something I'd like to see in the Tier Time product. The CDIS2 is different than any other printer I've worked with before, but their slicer definitely has a learning curve, especially if you're new to 3D printing. And I will tell you, I was frustrated with it for a while until I understood what it was doing and how to get it to send the prints that I wanted to get the colors in the places I wanted. But that being said, no other printer can change colors within a centimeter completely without a purge tower. And I think it's pretty exciting technology. Check it out.